afternoon today. So here I am in Hollywood Forever Cemetery, right off Santa Monica Boulevard in Los Angeles, California. That's the cathedral uh, mausoleum is called. It's right at the very back of the cemetery. And I want to show you that because it's uh, a landmark here. And that's what you're gonna look for if you're looking for Chris Cornell. Sorry about that, there's about a, a tractor that's gonna come through here. It's gonna be pretty loud. So you're gonna come in the front end, just go right to the very back see that mausoleum behind me and that is your landmark to find Chris Cornell if you're looking for him but I want to say something about Scott Weiland first of all Scott Weiland from Stone Temple Pilots one of my favorite bands I do say that a lot but they are they were and they kind of got a bit of a bad rap at the beginning called grunge wannabes grunge you know knockoffs but they certainly proved people wrong they had four incredible albums in a row purple core Tiny Music, and um, their fourth, number four, their fourth album. And Scott left the band. There's some, you know, he had some issues, to say the least. Uh, dynamic, dynamic stage performer. That's what did it for the band. They had a groove, they had, a, they, had their, they slowly developed their own unique sound, but he he was Stone Temple Pilots. What, what a fantastic performer really came alive on stage, he was incredible. And uh, so a lot of people think that he's buried here and it's actually listed on various websites that he's buried here at, at Hollywood Forever, but he's not. His ashes were given to a family uh, member or friends they did have his funeral here. Now it was a private ceremony, but the ashes left with him, with the family. So Scott Weiland is not buried here at Hollywood Forever Cemetery. A lot of people think that he's not. Uh, so there's, if you're a fan of Scott Weiland, I mean, you can come out here, you can, this is where the ceremony was held. There's a um, various places where, over in the corner, I'll take a story if I can show you where they were, uh, that you can, go to but really if you're a Scott Weiland fan you want to pay respect there's not many uh yeah it's kind of got to you have his music but for as an actual physical place to see his resting spot there is there is none and it's not here at Hollywood Forever Cemetery and yeah it kind of sucks for the fans who want to be able to pay their respects but hey, you got to respect the family and that's their wishes so his ashes are with them but Chris Cornell is indeed here, and you come out here and visit Chris Cornell. It's always loud here in uh, Los Angeles. This is a very, where Hollywood's right there. It's bustling. Paramount Studios right there, but a very quiet spot aside from the LAPD helicopters that are flying overhead constantly during the day. But yeah, this is a very quiet spot, and Chris Cornell is right here. Now I've been out to Chris Cornell's grave before, but I always get requests: Are you going to go back? Are you going to go back? And uh, I always come back when I'm when I'm at Hollywood Forever. I always drive by, walk by Chris Cornell's grave, and don't film it because I've done it. Be I've covered his grave before, but I'm a huge fan of Soundgarden, Audio Slave, and happy to do to show people how his grave is looking right now in 2021. Here he is, Chris Cornell, rock god. Look at him. Wow. The plot has definitely changed. When I first came out here. It was just the headstone. Now you've got a little rock garden plant. It's changed quite a bit. Quite a bit. Sadly, my rock is quite small compared, but leave something for Chris. And if you're wondering about this, uh, rock had some right here, this piece of art, really. This is, I believe, Tony Scott, from what I remember, the director. Um, I've said this before. Uh, yeah, Tony Scott. And they've got the movies that he directed, and you're gonna remember these movies. Taking a Pelham 1, 2, 3, Unstoppable, Spy Game, The Fan, Crimson Tide, True Romance, Last Boy Scout. Now we're going to get into the big ones. Top Gun, Beverly Hills Cop 2, Days of Thunder. And uh, 
2012, Tony took his own life. I believe uh, the bridge down in San Pedro is where he um, took his own life. Very, very sad. And a cenotaph for Hattie McDaniel from Gone with the Wind. Anton Yelchin just over there. This is, um, i show you right now while I'm here. Like I said, I've come on here before and shown all these, but here's Johnny Ramon right here. A lot of people think this is Chris's uh, I've, I've had people say the one with the statue with the guitar. And no, that's Johnny Ramon from the Ramones. Right there. Chris is just past this cement walk. It's a little bit of a, kind of a, kind of a bridge because the water goes underneath here. You'll see, oh no. I always thought the water continued. Maybe it does under, underneath. But Chris is right here. And it reads, voice of our generation and an artist for all time, Chris Cornell, 1964 to 2017, beloved husband and father. Soundgarden, man, they were around since 1984, but they really, they had like a, the first single, then a couple, oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. First single, then there was a couple of EPs, and then um, an album, I'm trying to remember the name of the Ultra Mega OK, I think it was it called, but then Bad Motor Finger was what blew them up and they became huge. I mean, the big three Nirvana, Pearl Jam, Soundgarden that was it. There's other bands, but those are the big three. Sadly, the only ones that are still going are Pearl Jam. And I love Pearl Jam, I don't mean sadly, like, I mean, I wish the other two were going as well. If you're a Chris Cornell fan, you know that he was a member of Temple of the Dog, which was a grunge supergroup with Eddie Vedder and as a tribute to Andrew Wood from Mother Love Bone. And if you're a casual fan or if you want to hear, just hear a good song and hear his vocals, check out a song called Hunger Strike with him and Eddie trading vocals. Absolutely mind-blowing and incredible. And that helicopter is so loud. So I hope you're able to hear me through that. But yeah, here's Chris Cornell. Beautiful spot. The helicopter is just circling, just circling the cemetery right now. It's unnerving. Like it's just going around in circles. Not exactly sure what for or why. Here's the Hollywood sign straight ahead. Once you're up, uh, pretty much past the 10 uh, freeway, you can, with, on a clear day, you can, on a clear day, you can spot it from further away, but on a clear day, once you pass the 10 highway, I mean, you just look north and you're gonna see the Hollywood sign pretty much from anywhere. It's not that big. People think it's really big. It's not, but it's just very, very visible. I mean, if you're standing beside it, it's going to be, it's going to be huge, of course. But as you see, it's not crazy big. I mean, the mountain is, and the hills that are, it's a part of, sorry, where are we here? It's a part, are huge, but they stretch far that way, far that way. Yeah. But yes, just look for the big mausoleum at the back. Mickey Rooney's right there. Toto, right there. That's a cenotaph for Toto. Yeah. He was actually buried somewhere else, and then they built a freeway. And over Toto's grave, sadly, but they weren't able to actually physically move him from there. But so this is just a cenotaph for Toto from Wizard of Oz. Yeah, Mickey Rooney right there. And there's Anton Yelchin. I've come out here many times to visit Anton Yelchin's grave. Here we are. All right, that's it. Okay. Beautiful, beautiful spot. Chris Cornell and Scott Weiland. Hope you're resting peacefully. Everyone else here as well. And to all of you watching, peace out.